This morning we are blessed to receive God's gifts in the rite of Holy Sacrament for little Alexander Irvin. We invite the congregation to follow along in the rite of Holy Baptism on page 268. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever, unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Victoria, how is this child to be named? Alexander Irvin. Alexander Irvin, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Alexander Irvin according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I now ask the sponsors. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are, at all times, to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Alexander Irvin as sponsors in the Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Be we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
Because Alexander is not yet able to answer for himself, we will all together with parent and sponsors answer on behalf of this child together. Alexander Irvin, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Alexander Irvin, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. Alexander Irvin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. This white garment is now revealed to show that Alexander has received, has been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all his sin. So shall he stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for him from the foundation of the world. Also receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming. That you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which shall have no end. Alexander, in holy baptism God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. We stand for prayer. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Alexander Irvin the new birth and holy baptism and made, her a, made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Congratulations. You all may return to your seats. Karsten, you can blow out the candle. <laughs> having, received, Steve, having received God's mercy and rejoicing in those gifts in holy baptism, the service now continues as we chant the intro it as printed in the bulletin.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, the spirit to think and do always such things as are right, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without you, may be enabled by you to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. (laughs) 
The Old Testament reading for the eighth Sunday after Trinity is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesied to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies, and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell dreams, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets 
who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having confessed the Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed and the rite of holy baptism, we now continue with the hymn of the day. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The word of the Lord is true and can be trusted. Even our children are able to know this simple fact. If the Lord God has said it, then it is true. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's the same way mothers and fathers comfort their children at bedtime when something is causing one of their little ones to be afraid. Your heavenly Father loves you, we say to them. You're his own dear child. He will guard and keep you. There's nothing to be afraid of. And because those kids trust that those promises are spoken by God himself, that child can settle down and rest in peace. The word of the Lord can be trusted. I think we would all agree with that. So then what are we to do when the incarnate Lord Jesus himself tells us to beware? After all, the word beware isn't the sort of cautionary be careful you might say to a friend going for a drive, or even the sort of listen up you might say to a team when you are about to give important instructions. No, in the text, pros ecate, the word translated as beware at the beginning of today's Holy Gospel, is about the most serious sort of warning that could possibly be spoken. Like a desperate mother or father who screams out, Stop! when a child is about to run into the street, the incarnate Lord Jesus tells us to beware. Because the thing that we need to be aware of is indeed a thing that could kill us. And so not only on the strength of the severity of Jesus' warning, but also because his word is to be trusted, when the incarnate Lord Jesus tells us to beware, we ought to listen and see what it is that we need to beware of. Beware of false prophets, Jesus says. Look out, dear saints, for among you are those who would distort my word and misrepresent my word and fe- falsely teach deception, half-truths, and lies as if they were my word. And because of such false teaching, you might perish eternally by believing and trusting and, and clinging to something that is not able to be trusted, something that is not the word of the Lord. Beware of false prophets, Jesus says, for they are a threat to your eternal salvation. And they will come to you. They will come to you, Jesus says, in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Which means that the false teachers won't be so obvious. They won't have a sign on them or have fangs in their mouth so that you know they are so dangerous. They'll be hidden behind things that appear to be holy. They'll be found in churches that claim the name of Christ. They'll put on vestments and stand in pulpits and have theological education and be rightly called and ordained so that you would never suspect them, for they look like the real deal. Or they'll write best-selling books or be preachers broadcast over all the world. They'll have the most popular self-help books on and podcast on iTunes so that everything about them appears to be legit. They'll have followers. Their churches will be filled with people. They'll be promoted. They'll even be trusted because they can speak so convincingly. But inwardly, Jesus warns us they are deadly, hidden behind those external coverings that make them look like the sort of teachers you should follow are false prophets, Jesus tells us, are as dangerous as ravenous wolves, seeking to destroy and feast on sheep. And how will they feast? (laughs) They'll point you to the hope you have inside yourself 
rather than pointing you to the hope you have in Christ. They'll give you a method by which you are able to fix yourself rather than calling you to repentance and then trusting in the strength of the renewing word of the gospel. By exhorting you to find comfort in your own ability to get back up and try harder and go and make a difference, they'll cause you to doubt the promise given to you by God in your baptism. And they'll turn the gospel of Jesus into a law that you can go prove to God how much you love him by the work you do for the kingdom. Couching their preaching in terms like love and acceptance and community, they'll deny the very clear words which the Lord did speak in order to justify behavior that they don't want to call sin. They'll preach to you that everything is going to be okay, just like those Old Testament prophets did in Jeremiah's day. They'll say, peace, peace, where the Lord has said, repent. And then rather than leading you to confess your sins and rely ever so boldly on the full grace of God in Christ Jesus, they will lead you to deny sin. And therefore, they deny the reason for which Jesus was sent in the first place. Whether it be the devil in the Garden of Eden, the false prophets which the prophet Jeremiah was condemning, the wolves in sheep's clothing of which Jesus speaks, or the many false teachers that are promoted and published and preaching all around us, we must beware and we must listen. For the incarnate Lord Jesus does indeed mean what he says. His word can be trusted. The false teachers among us today are as deadly as they have ever been. So trust the word of the Lord, dear saints, and beware. Beware of false prophets whose false teaching can lead you astray into eternal death. And listen. Don't look, but listen. Open your ears and hear the words which come from the lips of those who teach and preach and write and broadcast in the name of the Lord. You see, Jesus says that a false prophet will only be identified as a false prophet by listening to the fruit of his or her lips. Their words are the works of by which you know a prophet to be false. <laughs> Likewise, a true prophet will be found and affirmed by the faithful fruit which fr flows from his lips too. Yes, you must beware, but you must also listen. If the pastor preaches the law in such a way that you come to know your sin and want to be free from it, if your pastor receives your confession and points you constantly to the Christ who died on the cross to atone for the very sins you've confessed. If the pastor preaches along with the apostles that the promise given to you by God in your baptism is a promise which is certain and strong and can be trusted. If he reminds you in the face of temptation that you are baptized into Christ and so are God's own dear child. If he applies the word of God to the events of the day to avoid dismissal of the issues we must confront and also guards us from overreaction because of fear or anger or hatred. If he teaches the full counsel of God so that you would be kept firm on the sturdy foundation of the Word of God, if your pastor encourages you often to come and receive and taste and see that Jesus who died for your sins continues to forgive your sins with the very same body and blood that he shed so long ago. If you have a pastor who preaches the word in season and out, who will exhort you to faithful living while at the same time comfort you with the gospel, who fixes your eyes not on yourselves but on Jesus and who is always pointing you back to God's promises in Christ, then whomever your pastor is, and no matter what he looks like, 
You have a pastor from whom it is for whom it is good, right, and salutary to give thanks to God and to listen to. It really is true, you see, God's word, that is. Through his word, God not only creates your faith, but then he keeps you strong in the faith. Through his word, his Holy Spirit not only calls and gathers, but he keeps the whole Christian church on earth. So the reason Jesus wants you to be aware of false prophets and false teachers today is because he loves you and he desires for you to be saved. He desires for you to know the truth, to trust his word alone, for whoever hears and receives his truth alone will be like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. The rain can fall all at once. The floods can come in abundance. The winds can flow, and even false prophets can come and preach and teach. But whoever has heard and received the true teaching will stand up against it all and will not be led astray. The devil, the world, our sinful flesh will come. (laughs) But you, the sheep, will be living safely, listening to the voice of your shepherd. So beware, dear saints, and listen. The incarnate Lord Jesus, your Savior, does not want your faith to be destroyed. He wants to keep you strong and rooted firmly in the one true faith so that nothing will harm you and you will live with him forever. So, he warns us all to listen to the words of those who preach and teach in his name. If a preacher is proven to be false, then mark him as one God has warned you about and avoid his teaching. But if a preacher, by the fruit of his lips, is proven to be faithful, then give thanks to God and continue to listen. For by that faithful word he preaches, Jesus will be giving you life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God that transcends all our understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. As always, the prayers of the church are printed in the congregation at prayer, which we encourage you to make use in your homes this week. Just a brief reminder that at the back table, at the end of the service, you'll be be able to sign up for your picture session. Uh, We want everyone to be included in the upcoming new pictorial directory. And if you don't have your calendars with you, or don't know which day is good for you that last week of August, simply... uh, Click on the link that is given in, in your bulletin and sign up online whenever you have able, when you're able to in the next couple of weeks. We now stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For faithfulness to God's holy word among the pastors called to preach and teach it, and within the congregations committed to their charge as they hear and receive it, that false doctrine would be recognized and rebuked, and that pure doctrine would be taught and received for the edification of all the baptized in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for an increase in faithful church workers that the proclamation of repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Christ's name would fill our land and indeed the whole world. Also for Mr. Douglas and Mr. Grafe, our new teachers, as they transition to our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faithful generosity among the baptized, that they would give generously to support the Lord's mission and ministry done among them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Spirit to turn the hearts of all pretend believers, 
that they would be led to repentance and faith through the pure preaching of the law and gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all life from the womb to the grave, that it would be cherished and protected, especially for Charlie Craig and the life you've given within her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who have been placed in authority over us, that they would refrain from mere self-interests and focus on the common welfare of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Dennis and Michelle and all who are newly united in holy matrimony and all who have been married for years, that you would continue to bless their homes and make their homes a place where the love of Christ is made known to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, for those preparing to undergo surgery, for the elderly and shut-in and for all who desire our prayers, especially Vanita, Steve, Bonnie, Larry, Gary, Hilmer, David, Juanita, Charlie, Sarah, and Don, that they would receive healing, comfort, and be strengthened to endure according to God's gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
we stand. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.